Hi, hello, this is Jules the Human here, and welcome to the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. I'm one of your hosts, Jules the Human, and every week we dive into some anime, we go watch it, and then we come back here and talk about it. And today, we're going to be talking about Danganronpa for the very first time. This is the first time we're going to be talking about Danganronpa. If you were here last week or the weeks before, we talked about the first season of Overlord, almost said Overwatch, of Overlord, and uh, we ended that. We put it on our board. This is the board. We put it there. We ranked it. I ranked it an A. Matt ranked ranked in an S. If you want to go check those out, those are on YouTube, on Spotify, go watch it. But we're going to start our new anime arc. We are talking about the first season of Danganronpa, and I'm not here alone in the uh, school mm -hmm. of despair. I'm here with my co-host, Matt Galley. Matt, how are you doing this week? Uh, doing good this week. Uh, this is a really interesting show that we've been diving into, for sure. I've <clears> been... <throat> Like, I'm liking it so far. Got a lot to say about it for sure. Um, mm. uh, yeah. How was your week? How, how, how was your uh, <laughs> new free time? Oh, it's so good. Unfolding? <laughs> oh my God. It's so good. I love it. So much time to do. So much time to read a lot of manga. I've been reading a ton of manga, catching up on all the manga that I've had and I haven't read. And I'm really wanting to buy more, but I don't have the money for it right now. But we've been, uh, we went through. Danganronpa, the first four episodes, that's what we're going to talk about, episode one through four, and then next week we're going to do five through nine, so we're going to do five episodes next week, five episodes to be watched before next Thursday, and then we are going to be talking about that uh, next week, so uh, be prepared for that or start watching right now, but yeah. we got to talk about episode one through four, because this is the first time, again, I... How much do you know about Danganronpa before coming in? Because I knew nothing. I knew there was I knew like absolutely nothing. Yeah, absolutely there was like a, a fan thing. thing. I knew I knew was... that like it, I, I I had this idea that I had seen some of it, and I was like, it seems like a visual novel game. Like that's that's basically what my that's what I thought. That's what I thought my only like base of the game was like it's a visual novel game. That's and there that's are a lot of I, those, and that's kind of why I just didn't pay any attention to it because i'm not the biggest fan of visual novels also if i wanted to stream it i would have to read everything out loud and that's like oh that's a lot of talking whatever whatever so i i, I never really got into it but i knew there was like a big fan base for it because it was really good or um people like the characters or for some reason there was a lot of people that really enjoyed danganronpa uh and i didn't know why but now um i kind of see it because you went like on a deep dive, right? Like after you watched the first four episodes, I, I went like... on a I went on a dive, a shallow dive that okay. did not go past the episodes that we're going to talk about today. So I I've been keeping my like I've been very careful with key phrasing and wording that I've been using while I've been looking stuff up uh, gotcha. about the show to avoid spoilers for sure. Um, Kaylee, and it's, Kay there's a lot there. <laughs> Kaylee says you know everything, so I'm ready. Is that sarcastic, or do you actually know about? Danganronpa I'm curious I don't I don't know what your knowledge on Danganronpa is but uh we gotta get going episode one prologue welcome to despair high let's talk about that what happens in episode one so yeah uh like the title suggests it's very much a, a prologue episode that kind of throws us right into this situation so Hope's Peak High School, a private academy that gathers super level high schoolers of all varieties in order to level them up even further. Uh, Makoto Naegi gets an invitation to the school out of sheer luck, being selected from a lottery to join the school as the super high level luck students. The second he steps onto the campus, he finds himself passing out. Naegi awakens inside the school and finds himself meeting all the other students. Um, among, amongst the crowd, a childhood friend, Sayak, Sayaka Maizono, uh, is met and uh, they reconcile before we get an introduction from the principal of the high school, Monokuma. Monokuma lays out the structure of the school they have joined. No one gets to ever leave unless they kill one of their classmates. Monokuma draws a, a twisted sense of satisfaction from having quote-unquote, rays of hope be thrown into a situation where they must kill each other. Tensions rise after Monokuma's departure, and Naegi attempts to calm things down, only finding himself getting knocked out again. He gets knocked out a lot. <laughs> Waking back up and finding Maizono waiting beside, beside him, she explains that everyone has searched the place top to bottom looking for some sort of escape. 
The group has learned the undeniable fact that they have been locked inside of a closed space. While discussing the possibility of rescue, Monokuma interjects to add a new piece to the table, stating that he forgot to give everyone a motive, then passing off a CD for everyone to watch in the multimedia room. Um, asking Monokuma what he wants, his reply is their despair. Maizono reacts uh, with much more intensity than everyone else fleeing the room. Naegi chasing after her, swearing he will do whatever it takes to get her out. And then at the end, they're still all alive. 15 remain. For now. Um, Kaylee said, no, like I've played the game a couple times, watch other people play it, read about stuff on it, watch the anime, know all the stuff, you despair. Yeah, okay, despair. cool. Awesome. Yippee! <laughs> so Set up. let's talk about the op the intro sure. intro it, really cool i like it i like the song song's dope it's just a lot of static images though yeah wish they would have done something more superfluous Dynamic. something mm -hmm. crazy but it, i i can see that that art was probably in the game or and and it was just kind of moved over to show like to get the people that played the game related to the mm -hmm. anime which is fine but i wish there was some more like something because it's all just static stuff but the, the song's pretty cool and and we do get different opening and endings yeah on like every episode pretty much yeah which is it, it, cool it continues to change it up on, uh, in that respect for sure yeah i think the intro is supposed to basically reference the game yeah it it, it looked cool yeah. but i was just like okay this it felt it felt like a game's intro. <laughs> yeah, it felt like a game intro. So we get into Hope's Peak High School. Naegi is the main character. He's going to be the new uh, super high school level luck uh, <laughs> character. And we meet this squad of people. This whole I cast don't, of characters. Sure. Again, I don't know anything about the game. I'm assuming this is one of the games with these group of characters, or if they. This uh, is all the this the first season of the anime is a recreation of the game, uh, abridged basically, from my understanding. So one, these are all the characters that are introduced in the first game. All okay, a good a pro and a con for me on these characters. Pros. They are all super unique. They yeah. all look so interesting. Mm -hmm. They all have their own thing going on. And I'm like, okay, I can tell so and so apart. I can tell all of them apart. Yeah. I can tell they're they're so you know, man. Nobody nobody is like, huh, I mistake this person for that person. There's yeah. None of that. They're they're super identifying characters, but the way that they bring it up so quickly in this anime and speed right through them is oh yeah it, i think the speed and the pacing on this anime is bring gonna <laughs> what bring it down for me in a level whenever we actually have to grade the anime at the end it's gonna bring it down for me because like going back to like an anime like cabinary that we've watched before that had perfect pacing. That yeah. that was amazing. Even though it was still very fast, it was it was good. fast paced. It was, it was it was quick. It was very quick, but they were doing hitting everything when they needed to for sure. And and there was a lot going on. And there's a lot going on in this too, but the way they introduced all the characters and the speed at which everything's going, mm -hmm. um, I think this would have really uh strived with two benefited with uh two seasons yeah. or something yeah. uh a season one and a season two because they're trying to get to the story that they're trying to tell so quickly and so i'm like fast. i want to spend yeah. some more time with these characters i mean i'm fine i understand who they are i understand what's going on mm -hmm. but i want to see them interact more or at least give them a shine at the beginning uh, because right now they're just like name, face, name, face, name, yeah. face. And I'm like, they each get like, they each get this little like flash card that you're just expected to like kind of take in. And then they like their names are less memorable to me than like, oh, that's the super high level programmer. That's the super high level grappler. I don't like, I, 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 I got all those things at first. Like, you know, once I knew what their thing was, I can make that connection to their appearance. Um, but it was like all their names were right past me for sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, Kaylee said, I just remembered that I had a Danganronpa related dream last night. 
what were you in the game were you there at the high school uh claire says yep it's exactly the opposite problem in the game it's way too fast in the anime and way too drown out in the game oh interesting yeah i watched the first uh, i watched the first 15 minutes of a no commentary playthrough of the game and in the first like i think the first 15 minutes he's still like at the 15 minute mark i think he passes out like outside the school that's when he's finally walking in because he's just talking about the world and like all of these different people and like oh this person's going to be at the school i read oh this person's going to be at the school that i read so like oh, all brother you know how we get we get the three frames we get the school we get his computer and then we get him standing in front of the school there are walls of text to read before you get through those and yeah take that how you want it i don't know uh l says this is an undercover matt stan <laughs> account hello l. hello everybody watching live on twitch uh kaylee said yeah except we were in a mall for her dang and rampa dream okay uh, interesting that's season four coming up <laughs> um so we meet the squad we meet my zono we meet uh monokuma who's the principal who explodes what do you we know a little bit more about monokuma but what are your like um not thoughts but predictions as to what monokuma actually, actually is. is what do you think monokuma is because it's a stuffed teddy bear <laughs> it exploded do you think there's somebody behind the curtain do you think there's he's a sentient alien being there's like a bunch he, of things like up, up in the air uh, episode two spoiler but like he he uses magic yeah at one point like i i can only assume that like he's like some sort of an alien or a being from a different plane and maybe despair is literally what Wait, feeds his life force or something does he you know? use magic what what's he, his magic when he says like oh you're not supposed to hit the principal i warned you gun gunier or summoning magic gun gunier spears i thought he was just saying that because they came out of the they floor ju they just uh, they came out of the floor i th yeah I thought, they they, out of the floor? I thought they were just like they just uh in the shot i thought it was just like they materialized like in i don't think i think they just they, didn't they shot show it happening i thought they shot out of something i could be wrong i i thought he was just being silly <laughs> that's what i took that as that he didn't actually have magic that's why it still holds my theory is that there's still somebody behind the mask the bird, behind the yeah. bear because he's just being silly and he actually like pressed a button and something yeah. happened and i could be wrong somebody somebody's like did, did the stuffed animal die and he's like i'm not a stuffed animal i'm monokuma and another yeah. one like pops out and i love yeah. the silly little sound effects the little boings when he like jumps out yeah. from like a place because <laughs> it's uh it's twisted but yeah it uses these silly little like interjections sure. at times there were just machine guns and stuff everywhere, to be honest. He was indeed being silly. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought it just, like, he shot. He pressed a button. That's why I think some guy somewhere mm. just pressing buttons and has all things, all these things prepared. Um, So we meet Monokuma. He straight up was, like, casting level four <laughs> spells already. Four. Was key. I was still in Overlord <laughs> uh, mode. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> level four. He's going to bring out his world spells soon. <laughs> Um, so the only way to graduate from Hope's Peak High School is to murder somebody, and you have to murder somebody to leave the school, but you have to do it in a way that other people don't know you were the one that did it, and you can't get caught. Um, and then at first, like you said, everybody doesn't want to do it, but then he gives them motivation. Uh, I'm missing that slide for some reason. I think it was on my download that I don't have it, but oh, for sure. that uh, people... Uh, Get motivation because he hurt their pe hurt their people i guess mm -hmm. he well uh, for uh my... yeah like for uh nagi we see that like a video of his family like them all sitting there and then like it you know they all disappear and uh later on we find out that my zono is something to do with her idol group yada yada yeah. so he's probably attacking all of their like uh relationships uh directly with do these you... ones i have so many like it's really cool for this anime because I have a lot of questions because of what they've already set up in episode one, two, and three, where I was like, oh, they're doing something like big brain here. Like they're trying to do, you know, this murder mystery thing. And it it, it shows you flashes of things so that you have it in your brain. And then you can ponder questions. Of, oh, how did he kill him? What is this little piece of evidence? All that stuff. You know what I mean? But like, do you think he's actually hurting them do you think he actually has that power or is it some kind of mind game to get them to i'm so like 
fascinated by what could be the reason that somebody is doing this. Mm -hmm. And I really hope they hit that. I really hope at the end of this, they hit, well, we want to make this person the best detective. I don't know, something like that. Or we want to test them. And once the one that graduates at the end... Oh, it's this, just Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what that's what I want it to be either Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory or something like Wizard of Oz, where it's all yeah. just pretend. Yeah. Sort of. Um, so I what do you think? What do you think it, it's I think it's it more is? likely the the um the the smoke and mirrors going on with a lot of the stuff, even though I want it to be more like a chocolate factory situation. <laughs> But there is something like as we go along there, but by the end, what, what I'm ans- what my answer would be at the end of episode one is going to be different than what my answer would be at the ep- end of episode four. Okay. For okay. Sure. Well, then let's let's keep going. Um, so we find that out. We figure it out. All the stuff about the rules, about what's going on. And then we end up getting still at the end, 15 remaining. And I was like, I was pretty optimistic. I was like, okay, they're just going to show this for a while. The 15 thing. Nobody's going <laughs> to die. In a while. I mean, how many of them could die? You know what I mean? And then... Hey, 15 people, 13 episodes. Well, if only one of them is going to make it to the end. I thought... I didn't think they were going to get, like, one at the end. <laughs> What's up, CC? Uh, I just thought they were just going to play the game and then figure it out. I didn't think we actually had to kill some of these people. So in episode two, the quotation, not normal arc, kill and live. What happens in episode two? <laughs> Uh, Monokuma provides everyone with some extra tools and weapons around their rooms in order to help entice, uh, quote unquote, imagination and creativity. Monokuma visits Nayagi to explain some of the quirks of his shower door, followed by Maizono coming to Nayagi with her concerns. And to keep her calm, they decide that they should uh, switch rooms for the night. The next morning arrives, and as everybody shows up for breakfast, Maizono remains absent. Rushing back to his room, Nagi finds Maizono's dead body in the bathroom, stabbed with a knife. Nagi passes out, again, and reawakens in the gym with the rest of the students. Monokuma is accused of being the reason Maizono is dead, uh, but he arrives to assure everyone that the killer is definitely one of the students. Mono explains how things will go now that the first kill has happened, and the killer... Uh, well, explains how things will go now that the first kill has happened. The killer can't be caught by other students, so to assess the murder, a classroom ch- trial will be held after every homicide. If the culprit is found, only they get punished. But if somebody innocent is deemed guilty, all of the innocents get punished, and the punishment being execution. Junko is audibly uncooperative with everything Monokuma explains, finding herself... Uh, being made an example because Monokuma plays for keeps. The class goes on to investigate the area to find any clues that might help them during the next trial, or during the trial. Nagi finds Maizono's motive CD and watches it in the multimedia room. Discovering that Monokuma has the ability to get his hands on one of the biggest idol groups in the country, things begin to feel way more dire. Monokuma calls all of the students to the trial, asking them to find the red door on the first floor and enter. Kiri Giri, uh, the only student whose super level category we don't know, <clears throat> approaches Nagi to quip that he has to be the one to solve the riddle of the case. In the classroom trial, and then we yeah. have 13 remaining. <sighs> This one, this one went so fast. Yeah, I was like, "Uh oh, what? Um, (laughs) Two, two died already." Yeah, it's a lot. Uh, Claire says, "I feel like the whole everyone dies if you don't get the culprit. It's a significant weakness since it means they can never fail. It's only ever going to be be about how." See, that's what I thought would happen: is that they would fail, and they would find a way to get out of it. Like they would fail, and then it turned out to be a bluff. Or it turned out to be something not as everybody dies. Not it just says he just says punished. The people if they don't figure it out, we'll keep saying punished, punishment, and then somebody's like, uh, well, what are these punishments? And he's like, executions. Like, well, what do you mean executions? And he's like, X 
executions. Yeah. Electric chair, poison gas, torn apart by a whirlwind room, like whatever your executions. <clears throat> yeah. Which makes me believe in the game that there are multiple endings, I'm assuming. That I would think that. And that's one of the things immediately that I had to like not just impulsively go, oh, let me see all of the death scene yeah. videos. Like, let me, like, let me see all the good cuts out of this. I'm assuming there's a way to keep everybody alive. Like there's in a video game, like there's well, probably a way to get everybody out. Like the, but by the by the you know logic of the rules somebody if there's a trial happening somebody was killed sure and if there's a trial happening somebody is going to be found guilty and killed or everybody's going to be killed so that means the if i'm understanding that correctly the game follows a structured narrative where it's probably like loss or loss or gain where you huh. either full blues or oh. you continue i huh. would think yeah if you fail you just redo okay the video is entirely linear the um <clears throat> the other game that it makes me think of when i'm watching this play out is the phoenix Wright ace attorney games and in those yes. games yes you can't there, there's one story to tell oh okay okay cool because like you, you you have to get the correct you know yeah thing i was the thinking more i was thinking more along the lines of those scary games that they started releasing on playstation where you can go through it uh i forgot the names of the it's like an anthology Dawn, the dark stuff like that the dark picture anthology stuff like where you can you can make it to the end with everybody alive mm -hmm. but then sometimes some people die so i was thinking more of that game where you can do that um but i guess it's uh more linear uh, it would be really interesting if it worked differently but it's still a really good story gotcha yeah, yeah like phoenix right yep. um so we get a lot going on here cool. because the whole it's really interesting though it's really cool like i was really enamored by the whole thing of the whole switching rooms the whole um dropping little hints because what made sherlock holmes stories and mystery stories and and you know books and and little things like this is that we get information that we don't know what to do with yet mm -hmm. we get information that could be possibly super meaningful or really small and or and funny. we're just like presented with things and at the end it's like oh i remember that one thing they said oh i should have paid more attention to the so and so so like i love this style of storytelling here in this where it's like only the girls bathrooms are have locks on them my lock is messed up and you, we're switching rooms and i'm like okay this is there's a lot of information here mm -hmm. what how is this going to play out in some the, of in it's going to be game? benign yeah. yeah like not all this information can't come back up right yeah uh but, who done it yeah. dialed up to 11 exactly like i love the who done it aspect of this game or mm -hmm. this movie when anime uh, when I, I was talking to a coworker about it last night and um i was trying to because like they don't watch anime and i'm trying to think about the best elevator pitch to think of how to like explain what the show is trying to do to somebody in a contemporary sense and i was like i guess you could kind of look at it like saw like the saw sure. franchise meets like sherlock holmes and yeah. that was like the kind of the how i was trying to like sort explain of. the vibe of the show yeah so we get uh, a character that I thought wouldn't die first, uh, or die at all. I don't think I didn't. I didn't suspect this. This really jump starts it, and I don't know if I could show this on. I'm pretty sure I could show this on YouTube. And could this be my? We're, we're 25 minutes into the video at this point. Okay, <laughs> and it's not red, so it's, it could be just, anything. You know, that's just paint. Yeah, and I like how all the blood is. Hashtag is fake pink. blood. Hashtag fake, fake blood. body. Hashtag yeah. fake. So this happens, and I'm like, what's going on? What? I was like, wow. I was really surprised by this, and I was super surprised by this one. What's going on? Like almost back to back. In the one second episode. he was like, he was like, you're being unreasonable, and then she like continued to not back down. I was like, this ain't this ain't gonna end well. Something's gonna happen. <sighs> I was not, I don't know what I was expecting. She I didn't stepped on him and then, he, yeah, he was just like. But then like, she doesn't get a trial, right? So like. No, yeah, he exactly. Could... That's what he says. He's like, I wanted to avoid as many de unnecessary deaths as possible, but somebody had to be made an example. And that's like in the show. Now they know, oh, he's not messing around. Like he will just off one of us if we're 
if we don't follow the rules because yeah. she broke a rule. Huh. Uh, Kaylee says, yeah, honestly, I think they kill her first to show that the stakes are real, both to the characters and to the viewers. True. There you go. Uh, very true. So we get that. Uh, <laughs> I just put my Zano died, pink blood, another death. Junko died. Um, then we get presented with the whole idea of a classroom trial. We see Maizano's DVD that has uh, Monokuma uh, killing or doing something to her idol group. And I he think, has that kind of power. I think the CD was supposed to imply that, oh, you left the idol group to come to this school. But now we've told you you can never leave. So now the idol group's going to dissolve and become no more. And you're not going to have anything to go back to. So it was a, here at the school. So it was a future sort of thing. Yeah. Not like he did something to them. Because I thought he did something to them. Or it could be both. It could yeah, be it could implying be that with the fact that they have been kidnapped or whatever. And oh, yeah, because then it flashes. Uh, it's she, He says something along the lines of, uh, oh, <laughs> he says something along the lines of like, oh, well, she will sayaka ever rejoin her idol group and then it fades to black and then a little thing pops up that says answer will be revealed upon graduation so now her, the first Apparently thing not. at the front of her mind how do i get out of here or how do i graduate yeah which leads us right into uh the tr events of the trial i like to put myself in these in situations of anime or whatever and try and imagine how i would react and I don't know if I would believe something like I believe that if if I knew my family or somebody close to me was really in danger, then I would be like, OK, I guess I got to kill somebody in this game, in this fictional thing. I'm not going to go kill anybody. But like, I don't know if I would believe the information that they're giving me. Yeah, I, they just automatically I think because of fear and anxiety they're just yeah. like oh my god and they're in this and echo chamber where sure. they don't have their cell phones they can't contact the outside world they don't know they don't know i i would there's no way for them to I know i think there's some way out there's something there's got to be something but then again we've they learned spend days the fact days. that we're undeniably trapped in a closed space yeah so i think over time i would be more delusional to be like yeah. well i gotta do something but like i i I would want to believe there's something and around and, uh, this. Before before this point in the game, I'm like uh, several days have I I only again I only watched 15 minutes. But if this is anything like a Persona or like other visual novels, several whole days have passed where you're just having these open dialogues with characters, learning about them and their backgrounds and their personalities and sure. stuff. And then one day Sayaka comes talking about how one night overnight she had somebody jingling on her door so they asked to swap rooms that's maybe like five days in four days in yeah. i haven't played the games i don't know i'm just like you know for the fact that the show just is you know breaknecking us into uh again really like, fast yeah breaknecking us oh, past okay. everything this is all stuff that i would assume the game's touching on to build tension and anxiety within all of the uh the minds of the characters as you talk to them days go on and the conversations start to like well is it we're still here like what's happening where are the police where's our anybody our families where's anything um one more thing i wanted to touch on about this episode we get this character that seems to know a little bit more about things and me and Kaylin, as we watched, we had some interesting theories. I want to, I want to know I mean, what yeah. your theory would be for her. What is, what's her super story? high level investigator or whatever? <laughs> That's what I would just say. She just has very keen observation <clears throat> skills and uh, only speaks when absolutely like has something that will absolutely add to the what everybody's trying to figure out in uh, in the discussion. I, th I was thinking something so much more. I was thinking that is the one conducting the game <clears throat> no oh that's a good thought though i was thinking that she had escaped already and, and she's coming she's there back. on a return trip another yeah, season for another something. semester another semester for something like that was my main thing that she knows how this plays out because that's kind of how um because i'm reading alice in borderland uh the the manga i've seen alice in borderland the show and it's sort of like a death game as well <clears throat> and the way they do it is that people have that have already done the death game <clears throat> are sort of mixed in with new people sometimes and they they are kind of like the knowing person they're like oh okay this is how it goes this is how you're supposed to do it and they seem more calm 
in the situation because they already know how it goes. Mm -hmm. And she seems way too calm and way too okay with a lot of stuff going on to only be dealing with this for the first time. So I think she's returning for some reason to find answers, maybe to uh, uh, avenge a friend or find something for a friend or something. I think she's been here before. Mm -hmm. So that's my prediction for this character. Somehow she came back, whether through her own volition or she's trapped in there again. They picked her for, picked her up for a new another game, mm-hmm. uh, another uh, uh, semester. But uh, I think she she's previously done it. That's mm-hmm. my prediction there. Uh, Claire says I feel like part of the problem is it's hard to believe that anyone could uh, pull off this scenario without attracting major attention from law enforcement. And that's yeah. that's where I'd want to draw a uh, a parallel to uh, to hostile. Where in the hostel series you have this group of people that are doing these awful things it's a group of these elites that pay very large sums of money to do awful things to innocent people and they pay off local law enforcement and stuff to just look the other way because this all becomes a corrupt system that you know all ties into each other it's in the middle of a city right there smack dab it's like right there so it's either magic or someone with a lot of money a lot of money a lot of money or magic, I think. Uh, episode three, not normal arc, kill and live. I don't know what the whole parentheses thing and the not parentheses thing. That's only, it, I only say that to give the uh, argument for where a suspension of disbelief can be made for sake of the story. I'm not saying that that is what's going on or like, you know, whatever. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Uh, so yeah, episode three. Trial begins. With everyone accounted for, the trial begins. Nagi walks in as the prime suspect, knowing without a doubt that he and Mizono both know he's innocent, meaning everybody's lives are on the line. Using a combination of alibi, reasoning, and logic, Nagi is able to clear his name, putting him on the offensive. Also realizing that Mizono was looking to score a kill and then frame Nagi using the setup of them swapping rooms, uh, the group is able to discern. Nagi initially de- denies that possibility, but it all adds up too well to be ignored. Working off that information, Nagi is able to continue to deduce that the numbers written on the wall behind her body is actually a 180-degree uh, flip of a name, and when you flip it, it reads Leon. Now having Leon on the defense, Nagi paints the picture for everyone using the evidence that he had collected before the trial. Leon, the super high-level baseball player, rushed to destroy all the evidence of his murder. However, the incinerator was behind a locked gate, so he used a glass ball that uh, that was found broken nearby to activate the incinerator at range. Then tossing the evidence at range as well, um, part of it falling to the ground, the culprit did not realize uh, the evidence was there. Nagy then concludes that the culprit must have also used their toolkit, um, their screwdriver, and asks Leon to produce his. At this point, Leon has no defense left, and he is found guilty for the homicide of Mizono. Leon pleads that he was acting in self-defense and that it wasn't premeditated, but Monokuma does not relent. With Leon being dragged away to his execution, death by a thousand blows, uh, play on death by a thousand cuts. Kitty drops in on Nagi in his room after the trial to tell him if he's unable to overcome the loss of a friend then he won't be able to make it through the school nagi rebuking that he will not overcome their loss but instead drag the memory of them everywhere he goes and then 12 and 12 remain oh this was great Leon, the, uh, Kaylee says, Leon was a killer in my dream too, except he went on a killing spree instead of just killing one person. So that oh. was fun. Dude's a lousy killer and Mandrop. Hello, Mandrop. How's it going? Mandrop, have you played any of the Danganronpa series? I'm curious. Man. Okay. So this whole, again, wait, first off, shout out first to Matt. Off. Matt always giving me the greatest screenshots. He's the one you, you have to applaud for all these screenshots. You got a lot here on this one because it was so cool. I... I really enjoyed this episode. This episode was one of my favorites out of like anything because I do like, again, the whole Sherlock Holmes of it because it's so like we saw the glass on the ground. We saw the grate. We saw this. We saw that. 
Um, we saw the num. Okay, the, the one thing about it, the numbers were a bit of a stretch. I was just like, <laughs> okay, what is this? and then it's Leon. I, okay, I guess whatever. <laughs> um, that was the one part where I was like, mm, okay, cool. I don't remember any of these guys' names, but I'm sure if he was with them a- every day for like exactly. a week or so, exactly. he knows their names. Um, so <laughs> it was so dope. I like this part because. And then my my thoughts are going to change on episode four a little bit. Uh, but I like this so far. Episode one through three, it was fast. It was so insanely fast. But the way they set up the trial felt very well paced. It was fast with all the characters. It was fast with all the information. I'm like, okay, I got to catch up. But the way they always placed great information felt like it slowed down here the door the switching of the rooms somebody looking at the 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 name tag the name picture and that was changed too um all this stuff about uh you know what's his well the main character nike uh not wanting to believe that she was gonna possibly set him up somehow Mm -hmm. Uh, the introduction of Leon being the culprit because of, of because of these things, the baseball throw and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I, I figured it out with them. And that's mm-hmm. the fun part. When you figure that's out the, the story part. as you're going in it, you're like, who would do this? Who would be able to throw that? And I was like, the high school level baseball player. And it was like, boom, Leon. Yep. It's him. I love I love when one you all you need is like one little thread to be connected sometimes and then everything else is just like lines up perfectly. Mm-hmm. That's for that's for me a satisfying mystery when like mm-hmm. all the threads are placed there but you're just missing that one connection and then the second that it's made like the whole chain lights up and it's like mm-hmm. beautiful. Uh, C says they very much captured the captured the trial from the game so well. Uh, Mandrop says the games are fun. Does that count? Yeah, I mean, I, just asking if you played it. I never played mm-hmm. any of the games. Neither have I. Uh, Claire says just so fast you can hardly see the evidence, much less from your own, form your own conclusions. I don't know if it worked better in episode a week. Uh, it was really fast. Um, I honestly didn't know how the trial was going to go, so that's why my thoughts change in episode four. Um. Yeah, we'll talk about it when you get there. But uh, th- the one thing that I didn't like was the Leon. The numbers thing was kind of weird, uh, but it's fine. And the way they did like the little bullets, like yeah. that was so gamified. And I was yeah. like, oh, this is how the game is. I like that little that little thing. I don't know. What are your thoughts about this whole uh, trial going down? No, yeah, the, the whole the whole trial felt satisfying to watch play out i loved all of the the cutaways i i like how it looked kind of uh it looked video gamey every time there was kind of like a reset on the conversation the camera like spun around the room Mm -hmm. like it just it felt different to uh what we had seen in the other two episodes like so the show's uh remaining visually interesting and distinct by that part but yeah also like uh cz it felt like i was watching somebody like play play a game uh i I have, I have not played these ones but again i've played the phoenix wright games and it felt like a trial going down in the phoenix wright games where you have to like let people have their testimony and then you look for that one little discrepancy in the testimony and then you jump on it and then you've like rip apart their defense mm-hmm. um so that part satisfying and then again the whole one missing thread part where there's just that like everything's like there but you're just missing that one thing and then the connection's made love that so i got all of that out of this uh out of the trial for sure and uh, another thing that i enjoy out of the phoenix Wright franchise once you really have the uh the prosecution um like really like sweating beads like their character model will start to change mm-hmm. like the, if they're wearing a wig the wig will start to like shift off their head <laughs> and stuff and so sure. i liked how when leon realized he needed a defense but didn't necessarily have one he just started shouting more on more on more on more on more yeah. on like he started I sweating like the, i like the, the switch and that did you get to see mm-hmm. a different side of a of that character before they're inevitably dragged away to never be because seen they're that. holding up that iron fortress of yeah. like i'm gonna get away with it yeah. until it's actually boom yeah. and you can't see a way out and then they change automatically the duke of donuts says always makes me feel chuffed when a piece of media rewards you for paying attention it makes you feel smart yes very true 
Um, and that's why I like this. I like this whole trial. Uh, something we haven't talked about is the animation. The mixture between the 2D and 3D animation is so wild, especially in the executions, in all the the different ways they do like a they have like the characters are standees sort of, and then the, the camera moves through the standees of the character. I'm like, this is really cool and really interesting, visually appealing, something very different, I think, it, than we, uh, what we see in animation when, a lot. When we get the, yeah, the scene, the, the animation style change, it uh, definitely gave me the witch's domains in uh, the Magical Girl one. I'm forgetting the name. Uh, Madoka Magica? Madoka Magica. Thank you. Um, it reminds me of like the the witch when uh, dens when everything looks like paper mache esque and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's very uh, yeah, it's just very interesting. It's good to look at, and I like how uh, the show overall doesn't have a very dark tone. I guess to it, it's it's kind of got like a light light heartedness to it with its uh, the animation style and how um, appealing the character designs are and stuff like that. Um, the sound effects and stuff, but here, like it, you know, he he, Monokuma slams the gavel, and until the execution's done, it's like you're in a whole new world. It's just intense. Yeah, it was intense the entire time. I really, really liked how uh, the swap of tone using the animation, the music, everything to just mm -hmm. like really make you feel in the moment with the rest of the students when you're just like staring, like what the. F yeah, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> uh, Mantrop says your closest ally or your most hated character can end up being the culprit. You need to treat carefully, tread carefully when and how you feel about the characters in the story. Clay says, yeah, that part is all very based on the game, like the characters looking like standees and stuff. Uh, the entire trial part is very much like the game, like the 2D characters, the room spinning, the bullets. That would be the interesting part for me. The thing that would put me off is the walls of text. I'm fine with reading a book. I just don't want a wall of text mm -hmm. in a uh, video game most times. I but like uh, but like what I from what I understand, there's a lot of context in those uh, in that that you can get from the um, from the characters like where we don't learn about Leon. Apparently in the game, he talks to Nagi about how like he actually hates baseball. He hates it. See, I want that. Not, yeah, exactly. But the show, I we don't get that, that. stuff. So he he gets executed. That's so interesting. From when, by getting you know beaten by a thousand of the things that he hates. That's crazy. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. I want somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Give me something in the middle. Yeah. Um, but we move on. Everything everything happens all at once. <laughs> Uh, we get 12 more remaining. So we get into episode four, Weekly Shonen Despair Magazine, which is sort of like a new arc, I guess, because yeah. this changes drastically for me. And in the titles uh, of the show, you know, it's it. the first arc was like the not normal arc, but now we're in the... Um, wait. I didn't look The not normal four. arc, the not normal arc. Oh, no, we're still in the not normal arc. My bad. Um, okay, for me, it's it feel, felt very different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so episode four... Monokuma opens up a different uh, part of the school for the students to explore, which will happen after every trial concludes. The death of Maizono is only the beginning, everyone realizes. Whoever it is running the game has way more power than uh, everyone initially expected. Nagi finds a note stating that Hope High School will be shutting down until the problems are resolved, but it doesn't specify which problems. Um, so the high school, whatever it was, where it used to be is no longer. Once again, tensions begin to rise in the group. The ethics and mindsets of the situation they found themselves in begin to emerge. Um, and Nagi once again tries to find reasoning with everyone, only to have Monokuma taunt them over a nearby monitor. A couple things happen in a quick sequence. Fukawa is shown stalking Togami in the library. Ishimaru and Owada getting in each other's faces while challenging um, each other. And then also Ludenberg threatening Yamada for making her tea incorrectly. Um, with all this downtime, Monokuma makes another announcement. Since no new kills have happened, he's bored. And he's introducing new motives for the group to act on, this time it being themed around secrets and embarrassing memories. Everyone questions whether or not someone would kill over such trivial things, with Nagi's secret being he wet the bed uh, until the fifth grade. However, the very next day, a new body is discovered. 
this time it being the corpse of Fuju, Fujisaki. Togami offers Nagi to join him on his investigation, leading them to explore the police case files found in the new open area of the school. Asahina comes to tell Togami that Fukawa is acting strange, and they rush back to her room to check on her. Fukawa apologizes that she couldn't keep her promise, then shouting that she won't let genocide or show do as she pleases. Monokuma announces that the time for the next trial has arrived. Eleven remain. Um, Kaylee says, yeah, in the games between trials and stuff, you can hang out with the characters and learn more about them. Uh, which is great because they're then you're attached to them emotionally when they die. Duke of Donuts says, a thought occurs. People like to praise TV projects like The Last of Us, Arcane, and films like Sonic the Hedgehog from Breaking the Video Game Adaptation Curse and Danganronpa the Animation came out in 2013. Animators must be spewing. I like the little emo. That's really funny. <laughs> um bring back old sonic am i right uh but i would recommend watching a playthrough of the game after the anime is done then you can just skip any parts you find boring or watch at cheat them speed yeah i think this is because it's more niche it's than switch, other games so just it. what's up it's on switch so i might like for 15 bucks i might just get it yeah i put it in my uh steam oh yeah it's also on steam yeah i put my, put my things. steam uh wish list, wish list last night so i was like yeah what a cliffhanger am i right okay so this is where kind of i have problems here sure um, so we get the whole, get some more evidence or a new area open. They have a school. swimming pool on the second floor. Okay. Whatever. Uh, are swimming pools usually on the second floor? I don't know. <laughs> well, that was my first thing. I was like, okay, whatever. But we get the whole idea that boys and boys and girls have locker rooms. The girls are locked. You can't switch the, you can't switch passports or whatever mm -hmm. they're calling them. Uh, and again, got... another another one of those just benign pieces of info that the show just kind of tosses at you, but it's pro it's definitely going to come up in the trial. Yeah, um, we get this guy kind of searching through books about things. That's going to come up probably later. This girl being super weird, uh, <laughs> just guys being dudes, which guys is really funny. Dudes. Uh, I really like this little part. This is the part that I really like. <laughs> it's really silly. It just and then the next take day, off each other's heads. Like they're so nice and fine and acting like bros. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's totally normal. And I was like, okay, that's really that's cute. Normal that's guy really behavior. funny. Uh, this whole thing that's happening, and then the introduction of uh, some secrets that could have somebody killed. And apparently, somebody's secret was bigger than them wetting the bed in fifth grade, or at least to them. Yeah. It was better or bigger than that. Um, the introduction of Genocider Show is gonna play a factor yeah in this thing this whole copycat killer thing i don't or it could be them or they're here with or us, genocide show us. is here i don't know if i like them presenting the fact after it happened because then we're getting information that like if i was given all the information before the the death okay but now it feels like they're writing an answer for the question. Somebody died. We need a motive. Oh, let's have uh, this whole thing about a, a somebody that killed a lot of people uh, that they're going to find out. And it could be just that they're just finding out about them. But nobody mentioned Genocide or Show before. And then now after a death, they're like, oh, but about this thing. It doesn't let me, the audience, as mm -hmm. much as the first one predict yes or able to predict anything i would agree which it is... does it does kind of it does the whole thing with uh the, the case files you know and maybe they like earlier in the episode oh the new part of the school is opened up oh here's the library oh here are police case files they're real these yeah. are real police case files oh look i could flip through this one real quick oh look here's a couple of uh serial killer cases I, I I don't know how it like introduces that like without it feeling like cam fisted. Yeah, that, that's um, why. But that's not felt... to say that you know they did it the right way. That's not yeah. to say that. Just I don't know how they would pull that off. I I don't know either. But that was this is the first time where I'm like not totally on board with it. I'm sure the trial is going to be great, and it's going to be that somebody is genocide or show. They have split personality or something. That's kind of our. Uh, our thought here that somebody is the Genocide. killer and you would expect it i think you would expect it to be the very Fukawa. large oh uh, the very yeah 
the very large person here uh i don't know that i didn't write all their names down there's 15 of them i'm sorry yeah but uh you would think it would be them but i i definitely think it's her uh the girl that's kind of weird uh it made it seem like she was supposed to handle that person like to keep them cool to keep them ha not have them change but i think it is her that she has some sort of personality disorder that has her uh <laughs> change or something uh it does still suck but also estimate sakura sakura is the buff lady okay sakura yes i think uh, i think they're leading us to believe that sakura is the killer because it was in the weight room it was somebody that was a girl yeah. in the locker room yeah and they were there right before it but then they also presented the evidence that they spilled their protein drink exactly yep and it was clean now it's up gone before then. so and it I could be a split personality thing for, for her, but I think it's somebody else. I think the show wants us to think that it's uh, Fukawa, the girl that was like, <laughs> I that one. The, uh, the uh, girl that was acting all strange. I think the show wants us to think that she is the culprit, but I think that she is a red herring. Sure. And, it's, and that's why it brought up the point that uh, guys and girls can only use their respective things because somehow a guy made a loophole and got into the girls locker room i think that might be what's happening i think it's this i don't know her name the weird one i think she, i think it's trying to set her up as a red herring because everything like it, everything the show is obviously pointing at her like oh she's saying that she was supposed to keep that person under control yada 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 she's like that i don't know that's just that's what I think the show is trying to make us think that it's her so they can actually introduce like one last bit of information. And then, oh, actually, here's the clear piece that means that she's innocent. So now they have to figure out who it actually was, just like how they did with Leon. They made. Oh, thank you for following Duke of Donuts. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the lights went off. I don't have my alerts on for the podcast, but thank you so much. Um, Claire says there's so much writing in the game that you get the clues in advance, but they're buried. I thought it was deliberate till seeing one of their other games, but then it quickly becomes clear. They just can't stop writing. And when, when there's nothing to say, <laughs> people love it. That's I, so they're probably I just like, feel like that's most visual novels that, okay. <laughs> most allow novels, you branching branching just don't like, stop yeah just because that's what people want right they just want to keep hearing more from the characters sure. but uh, you know obviously with the exception of this one because there's the whole murder mystery going on cz thank you for the 28 months thank you so much that's what the lights do whenever you sub or something like that but you could no alerts okay that's do not we'll beep up like. the lights thank you for the prime <laughs> appreciate it people beep up hello to Balio. <laughs> hello welcome to the stream um we're talking about Dang and Rob episode one. So they present so much information here in this one. Genocider show is the biggest one. We got bloodbath fever on the left. We got uh, a very random girl uh, where in the guys changing locker room, it's There's a guys. different. It's a it's a it's a regular pop idol group. So that's something weird. There's blood on their face. That girl's face. This guy's acting like his own Sherlock Holmes and yeah. he's trying to figure out because I, my prediction is that he's just like super entitled and he just that's what the that's, game. You know, that's what uh, that's when tensions uh, arose earlier in the episode. That's basically what happened. Somebody was like, well, you're an heir. You're the super level heir anyways. That everything's probably just a game to you. And he was like, yeah, because I always win and <laughs> make no mistake. That's not me trying to tell you to not try because mm. i find it boring when just people lie over and accept defeat sure that's his but, right but there's also like red herrings to him as well because yeah. the the cords that she was strangled with or hung up with and they were in the library from the library so there's so many different things what do you think how, who do you think this part is first off about this little trial where do you think this trial is going to go but then overarching since it's the first time that we're talking about dang and rapa where do you think it's going to end up so first My, off so, how do you oh, who do you think this on. is i Who's... think by the time the case is resolved uh fukawa the girl that's acting strange is going to be the one that's found guilty but i believe that it's going to be maybe a case of togami manipulating fukawa into murdering somebody in order for him to um continue to uh trim 
the herd for him to have a greater huh. chance of winning. I think this is a tactic for him to just get another person out, get two people out, two birds, one sure. stone, as they say. Huh. So he and okay. the only person that Fukawa would have been able to do something like that to is the high tier level programmer who is the smallest uh, person in the whole group, even smaller than Fukawa. Mm -hmm. So then you think next episode, both two people are going to die and he's going to I think I think Fukawa triumphant. is going to be I think Fukawa is going to be held accountable for the killing of Fujisaki. But it was actually but Togami he won't putting get... Fukawa up to it. So he's he because he didn't commit the murder. There's sure. no rule about they they even explain it in the during the trial. There's no only the person who that actually committed it. the murder gets to get out. Accomplices have but, no bearing. But then eventually he's going to have to murder somebody. Eventually, after the because after there's enough people exactly out of the mix, sure. and then it's easy to manipulate the remaining. Okay. Um, knowing what happens, it's very interesting to see those thoughts is what CZ said. This one's harder to figure out before the trial. So since there's less time to figure it out in the anime, it's even more difficult. And the Duke of Donuts says, no worries, lads. Loving the production values in the open discussion. I don't have too much to add, having not watched this show in a long time, but I definitely want to stick around and hang out. No worries. Totally cool. Um, we just talk about the first four episodes. Next week, we're going to talk about more episodes. Um, appreciate you just hanging out and, uh, vibing because we go through a lot of different anime. Um, do you think there was actually something here for somebody to kill over? Because it seems just like I completely forgot new motives got introduced too. Yeah. So I like, don't know. Do you think that's oh my god? That was there's just... too many pieces on the table for me sure. to even like discern. Like okay. if I had to put if I had to bet on it, I would not be. But like I think I still hold to my original thing and that. I, I don't know how the new motives are going to come into play, but they will. I know that. Okay. I don't know how. <laughs> I think there's something to this girl. I don't oh, know yeah. what. Well, she's the one that kept on uh, poking at the fact everybody needs to adapt. Other otherwise, they will die. It's not the strong that survive and the weak that die. It's the strong. It's the the adapt. Those who can adapt survive, and those sure. who cannot adapt do not. But there's. <sighs> Yeah, there's too many things in play. The whole <laughs> the whole poster and the blood over the I'd be poster. I'd pulling face. my hair out if I was playing the game trying to figure sure. this out. <laughs> this this is uh, a difficult one because I don't know. I was asking you mainly to get your thoughts for the show, but mm -hmm. I don't know how this one's going to end. No, oh, yeah. Um, but I just know that the setup was a little wonky for me, and that I did. Um, depending on how it ends up, I'm sure the trial is going to be great. I'm sure it's going to be fantastic to watch and all this stuff. But compared comparatively from the initial setup for the first little uh trial arc and then going into this next one i liked the first one better i like the way they handled that because they presented all the information here and now the whole genocide or show thing is going to be weird now if they go on to a next arc they're going to i hope they don't present new things that we didn't know about oh this so-and-so's family i don't know whatever mm -hmm. um so it's uh cool uh since this is the first time we're talking about it how many people do you think are going to survive to the end? Do you think there's no more than one two, and it's, our, and it's our main character? No more than two. No uh, more than two. No more than two. It'll be two or one getting out. If that, if not, just like oop, everybody dies. Okay, that could be it too. I was. I, I think they're <laughs> going to get down to about six, and then some. Something's going to happen for them to get out. There's going to be some loophole in Monokuma's thing. To where they're able to get out because this that is girl, the one we don't know much about. Mm -hmm. There's something to her. I really do believe that she's done this before, and there's something to her that she wants to come back for a reason. So I think she has some other motive, and she's going to help the remaining. But I think there's going to be more than two. I like your point about the loophole because we've seen them question him about certain rules and he'll rules. just amend it on the fly yeah like he'll be oh you're right new rule which makes me think that <laughs> he he also is some human somewhere yeah which makes me not believe that he has magic or yeah. some he's, magical force. he's the he's the jigsaw killer behind the doll worse than yeah yeah sure um and that's his doll so what are your thoughts about danganronpa 
Uh, I'm very much know. excited to see where we go with this. Yeah. 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 For sure. Um, <laughs> let us know your thoughts. Thank you for all the people that watch live on Twitch. You can watch this on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jules the Human is where we post it on Spotify. If you want to watch on Spotify as well or on Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get podcasts is where you can watch this. Um, you can watch this on Spotify uh, over on the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. Uh, I'm trying to plow through the new Blu-ray sets I bought before I step to Crunchyroll again. I tried to War and Underworld and Dr. Stone. I'm going to wait till they get an omnibus. I, I decided I really want to read the entirety of uh, Dr. Stone because it's great. Um, Mantle said, whodunits are rare. Good ones are even more rare. I don't even know if I've watched a whodunit in anime form. I don't even know if there's another one that I've watched. Either way, I can tell you. Yeah. Next week, next Thursday, we're going to watch episode five through nine of Danganronpa. So mm -hmm. if you would like to continue, watch five through nine before next Thursday and we'll be live at this time next Thursday. Wait. Yes. I have a new job coming. Okay. It's not till the weeks after, forget but next week, you know. <laughs> forget everything, you know. Uh, we're going to be live. Watch episode five through nine before then. That's five episodes five, six, seven, eight, nine. Watch all five of those episodes. And come back here and we'll discuss them for the Jules and Matt Anime Hour. And then the next week after that. Right now. I'm gonna go watch them right now. <laughs> but <laughs> these are the anime. If you're new to it, if you're new to the show, these are the animes that we've watched before prior and we've rated them. Uh, you can check those out in the Discord. We post I posted a picture in the anime section of that. If you want to join the Discord and talk over there. But uh Matt, where can they find you when you are not being a super high school level uh bartender? When I'm not at Despair High, you could find me on my Twitch at Matt underscore Galley, or you could find me on any of my socials um, on X, on Instagram, et cetera, at ITS Matt underscore Galley. Just put that ITS at the front. When we're not here, where can the people find jewels? The Duke of Donuts. Yes, we watched Cabinary of the Iron it's Fortress. Uh, we have those episodes if you want to go watch us talk about them on the YouTube channel. Um, over there in the Jules and Matt anime hour section. Um, go follow Matt. I'm Jules. You can follow me, Jules the Human, here on Twitch or um, on YouTube, youtube.com slash Jules the Human. Join the Discord if you want to talk. I'm probably going to be playing games after this if you want. I want to play games with you. Um, and tomorrow, if you're watching this live, I'm going to be playing, I'm going to be starting Horizon Zero Dawn. I've never played that Ooh. before. Um, so tomorrow at 9 a.m., we're going to be playing Horizon Zero Dawn for the first time. So if you like that, cool. I'll play games and stuff. But uh, go follow us on all the things. Follow us on X. Uh, the, our names are down there. But thank you so much for watching. And see you next week for some more Dang and Rampa. Bye.